What's up, everybody? Welcome to the HXC episode 25. Uh, this week we have some Warcraft news. Uh, we're going all the way back to BlizzCon, I guess, uh, with some of the uh, Warlords of Draenor stuff. We've got some Hearthstone Cracker Packs, some patch notes, the Diablo betas uh, started, and even some heroes, some heroes talk. Uh, but first off, uh, let's uh, throw it to Dom. And uh, how you been, Dom? How's it going? I get a green screen. Woo! I saw that. We actually watched you paint it, didn't we? Yeah, you did. You know what the really cool thing is? Now when I drink Monster Energy... You could pee on your wall and it's no big deal? Look, you could see oh. through the can. How cool is that? I don't... And then look, I disappear. It's like magic. My face is gone. Yeah. Sorcery. Fair enough. It is, it is, it is. All right, Squishy, how are you? What's up? What's new? Um, I got glasses. They're pretty cool. Yeah, I see. I have. It's a new thing, new look, new look. Mm -hmm. How was the hiatus for you? How was the winter break? Uh, it's very cold up here in the north. <laughs> Weird. Cold I know. Um, I hope you guys, you know, we decided to give the U.S. some of it this year, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. It wasn't so bad. I'm used that to it. That was nothing. <laughs> oh, that other voice you hear. You might know him from some of the As Seen on TV podcasts and the Heroes of the Storm podcast that we also do. This is uh, Thilodrin. How are you? I'm good. You said Diablo 3 beta started, so now I'm checking to see if I got into it. Oh. You get to watch me use my broken ghetto authenticator here. You mean sweet and well used. Yes, as in the button is broken and I need to use something metal. In this case, a sword. Well done, well done. Well, so, uh, should we start into some of the, the, the news for the show here first? Uh, this is going to be my last episode as a host of the HXC. Yep. I'll be, I'll be around. It's sad. I'll be around. I, uh, I, had, I had a busy, some, some busy times coming up, so I wasn't going to be able to really put the effort in that I needed to. And I already wasn't. To be fair, so uh, we you will be seeing Philodrin or Omikins, which you Omikins. know from the other from the As Seen on TV podcasts. Uh, each either one of those guys will be filling in and and pulling the role, and I believe Zista will be pulling the host duties. Yep, you guys get to put up with me and my shenanigans now. Yes, <laughs> that means more recorder songs and less nightcore. That means. This is this <laughs> this is the final season of HXC season one. Final episode of HXC season yep. one. HXC season two starring Zista. Yes, yes. Next week. Now don't uh, don't oh, panic oh, oh, oh. if you if you actually enjoy watching watching me on this camera. I'll actually I'll still be around. I'm going to be part of the Heroes of the Storm podcast that Squishy hosts, uh, and I will be around for guest hosting. If, if need be. Uh, I just don't have the time to put in all the time. Okay, hold on. So in this season, how do you go out? How do I go out? Yeah, are, are you, like, are you killed by Zista? Well, like, you came in like a wrecking ball, right? Well, I... Mm. Like, okay, let, why don't we start... Why don't, <laughs> why don't we start with Sophist throughout season one of the HXC? Well, I don't... Take us through it. Yeah, no, well, that's I, well that's hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's take this back a second. Oh, we're 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 cutting the lore segment today. <laughs> There's no lore segment, so right now it's time for the lore of of Sophist. <laughs> how, Sophist, how did you become the softest man? I don't. That's up to you guys. I I didn't dub myself the softest man. I, I don't know. No, I, do you know who I, did? But I I seem to recall you walking <laughs> around BlizzCon going, "I have the softest hands. Feel my hands." That, yeah. Well, so, I mean. so, so, all right. So maybe not how you became, but how do you get your hands so soft? It just happens. It's just, I wash them a lot. Oh. <laughs> Moisturizer. Oh, what kind? Uh. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's a lot of beer. I have that. Beer. Do you moisturize your hands with the beer, or maybe. is it just from holding the? You don't. Do you use beer cozies or? The temperature changes. Yeah. I drink lots of beer, and my hands are dry as shit, so you know what? It's not the beer. Oh, yeah, see? okay. Look, he's got it. I came in like a cotton ball, not a ring. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Yes. Well done, Shadow. Well done, indeed. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. So we can get back to me at the end of the show. Let's uh, let's let's do some let's do some Warcraft. I do like talking about me though. We'll move on to Warcraft stuff people actually want to listen to. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they want to listen about you. No, go yeah. on. So. We went to BlizzCon, we came back, I know we did some shows afterwards, but uh, some of the stuff we wanted to cover in uh, Return from our Hay, this was some of the bigger stuff. Uh, first off, the Warlords of Draenor is coming out, and along with that, when you purchase Warlords of Draenor, uh, you're going to be able to get one free boost to level 90 right away. Uh, Phil, you want to talk a little cool. bit about how you feel what, what do you what, you look like you're pretty pumped for this one. <laughs> i don't know right if he was there, yeah. trying to like jersey shore or if he had a question <laughs> i was kind of confused oh yeah i'm sorry at the cat at a camera so i thought I was... it was a fist pump so i thought he was oh, good i thought, I, he I was thought it was super excited teacher, can i go to the bathroom please <laughs> <laughs> no no in a bottle well i am excited for it because um I was leveling the other night, I did, actually last night, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get my mage, my original character to 90 finally, and that's what I'm going to play in Warlords. So now I'm going to have options if I change my mind, I'll have this 90, that 90, and then all of a sudden, wait, why do I care? I can boost to 90. This is fucking amazing. Yeah, so I really like that. Um, a free boost to 90 gets you right into the expansion stuff. For new players, I think that might not be great because they're missing the whole leveling experience. So now you're going to have a bunch of fresh newbies thrown in at level 90 with all of these abilities to use instead of them being handed to you piecemeal. And I think queuing for dungeons at that level is just going to be ridiculous. Unless they don't allow brand new players to boost, which would be okay with me, I guess. Well, Would you, what do you uh, think? They can't boost till they till they earn, like get to a certain point. They have so many hours, get certain levels. Maybe or something. something. Maybe like gate it. So you know you can't just create a new account and then instantly make a ninety. Like See, I don't think they're gating yeah. it at all. Um, I don't think they are either. I'm just saying I think they should. Yeah, because I know that um, they they actually said that they are gonna test um, allowing you to purchase it through like the store, in game store, or the online store, one of the two. Um, so you're actually going to be able to boost a character through paid means now. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys think they're going to they're gonna gate that in terms of um, like the, the initial of the expansion? Like, do you, If that's something that they go through on the test, do you think we're going to see that for the launch of the expansion? That you can pay to get a 90? Or do you think they're going to gate that and wait like a month or so? Not initially. I don't think we're going to see that on immediate release because this is going to flood the new areas oh, yeah. going into Warlords with you know 90s and stuff like that. It's just going to be completely overloaded. I could see it happening maybe a month in or maybe first major content patch or something like that. I don't know, but definitely not at the beginning. How was, how was your launch experience for, for this? Because my server... It was lag city. Like, I remember trying to quest in Jade Forest, and it would take forever to do anything. I started two days, three days after launch, so my launch experience was quite smooth. I thought you said oh. after lunch, and now I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Two days mm -hmm. after lunch. Yeah. Two days after lunch. Mm -hmm. I've been eating uh, anything since. You know, you know what this means for me? Ooh. Is that I'm, I'm actually going to have a level 90 monk. Ooh. That's what this means. You know what <laughs> this what means, means for me? me too. I'm actually going to have a level 90 Alliance character. Yeah, oh, wow. Ooh. I need to see the story on the other side. It's going to be no, it's going to be drastically different. It's not going to be like now. Um, yeah. The the two sides are going to they said completely different level experience. So um, That's good. Yeah. So I I want to get the full story. And uh, the reason I never did it in the past is cuz I never wanted to level it and I don't mind leveling through the areas of content where it's actually relevant it's now going back and leveling through the starting i just don't want to do that you can't you can't make me well if you guys are excited for it uh the they have also said that it's going to be available for pre-purchase soon are you gonna just just get it the second it comes it becomes available are you Still haven't paid off the Diablo one. What's that? <laughs> the, the Diablo one's all paid off. I just I just paid that one off. But um, 
My issue is I have all the collector's editions, the physical boxes. I need all the physical boxes. I can't be like, oh, no, sorry. If it's one thing, if they decided not to offer it anymore, then I don't have a choice. I Obviously, I pre-purchased the digital, but um, I, I need to... I need to get the box. So that means running around at midnight trying to get the thing, making sure I'm home, things all installed and upgraded for 3 a.m. when servers go live. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a big production. Yeah. yeah. Now, the. Uh, I think it was Zarheim on Twitter. He said, uh, he was asked the question of, you know, what if I wanted to buy the collector's edition? I won't get the 90 re immediately, right? So, um, what he said was wait until you see what's in the collector's edition first what do you think that means probably that there's going to be something in there that will completely negate the not getting your instant 90 when you pre-purchase something yeah, are you sure that that's aside from the kitty that now takes over that seems weird like if you if that happens i don't know i i guess you could do it i guess that's fine it's not that huge it just seems weird that that would be part of their uh their deal like uh, that just seems like an odd thing to add to me i don't know i don't know i like the whole pre -pur i like the idea of them giving the 90 to you now if you pre-purchase this way you have a bit of time to get used to things so when the game launches you're not one of those yeah. aforementioned new players running around clogging up the starting zone running backwards and getting yourself killed yeah that's true yeah I gotta learn how to play my monk. Mm. Hmm. Cake yeah. smash. That's all you need to know. <laughs> That's how I, I level. Still know how to play a mage. My monk's sitting at like eighty nine right now, or eighty seven, somewhere around there. And that's all I did is like keg smash my way to, to yeah. high level. That's literally all you did. And then it got to the point where I was like tanking dungeons for whatever, and I had no clue how to play the monk. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys do get. Uh... If you do buy, it, well, you guys assume all of you are buying Warlords, so I mean that's kind of a given at this point. Yeah. Uh, but are you going to get a digital deluxe, or I'm just that we know you're getting the collector's edition. Are you guys getting digital deluxe or just normal? Normal. I'm just getting normal. Um, yeah. between the two of us, I think Omi's gonna, sh we're gonna get her uh, collector's edition. One of us between the two of us, anyway. So I'll probably let her get that one, and I'm just gonna get normal. Now, so, what if I told you that the Digital Deluxe Edition comes with a free pet and a free mount? Depends. I'm sold. Does that change your mind? I'm getting, that out, of, is, I'm getting that out of the Collector's Edition anyway, right? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if the mount is fantastic, sure, I'll go for it. Otherwise, just need to see. I get you. It really depends on what it is. But here, here's the thing that I found interesting is Collector's Editions of the past, before Miss Pandaria, were just pets. Now, starting with Missa Pandaria, it was a pet and a mount. I thought it was kind of a one-off deal, but apparently every collector's edition from here on out, we're getting a pet and a mount. And a free boost to 90. Mmm. Just Ooh. one up themselves. Yes. Yeah, so, well, no, so the next everything. expansion, so after Warlords of Draenor, we also get a free character boost to 90. Yes. Uh, <laughs> to, 100, to 100 at that point. No, yes. 90. So... I have one more question for you guys about this Warcraft thing. Uh, around the time that they allowed a pre-purchase for Diablo 3, the beta came out. Do you see... Have they announced... I, as far as I know, they haven't announced a date for the beta. Do soon you see it coming out extremely TM. soon at this point? Soon to you. Yeah. Do you see it? When do you think? Do you think it will Because they, they're, now, they're allowing you to pre-purchase. And, and, and that was about the same time that they, they gave out the friends and family stuff for, for the Diablo 3 expansion. Hmm. Honestly, I can say within the next two months. I mean, that's a broad estimate, but I can't see it, you know, being any longer. What is I mean, uh? All right, hold on. I had an epiphany. <laughs> when is uh? When is Landfall coming out? Landmark, you mean? Landmark, yeah. Uh, Omi was saying something about the end of February is when the alpha starts. But it sounds late. I don't know. End of February? There was a, uh, I call yeah, the was week a... before Landmark comes out. 
Wildstar is rumored early 2014 as well, I think. If you, look, you think? if you look at Blizzard's past release oh. history, they, <laughs> <laughs> they seem to launch um, right around the time something big is coming out. Mm-hmm. What was it? Yeah, Final so Fantasy still... had just come out, and they launched uh, Hearthstone, and it was very. It's almost like they're strategically, like placing this stuff around. They're gonna tell you till they're blue in the face that that's not what they're doing, but they're one hundred percent doing that. They're of course generating they're all the hype. Do you then. think Warlords is coming out around the same time Wildstar, or do you think something else? I think like the DM. beta. I think the beta is gonna start with Landmark, um, and then whenever the next big release is. If that's uh, Wildstar, then it'll probably be around then. Makes sense. Either that, either that, or if it's not quite ready, then we'll see the the Heroes of the Storm beta, and uh, cool. Yeah, Heroes of the Storm beta will be enough to knock Wildstar out. All right, all right. So you guys want to talk about these uh, PVP changes? Yeah. Th- <laughs> PVP changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hey. Um. What's it called? Ghostcrawler. You know, he's now PvP and with uh, Rat Games. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so, I, that's true. We wanted to talk. The, we last time we this the the Phantom episode of episode twenty four, uh, we did talk about Ghostcrawler leaving, but we found out recently that he's working for Riot now. We don't know what exactly he's doing with Riot, but he is uh, he's working with Riot now. So, what are your thoughts? The two theories I've seen so far are um, that he's either working on League to help balance it uh, or he's working on one of Riot's, you know, other projects that they have not made public. A the, League of Legends MMO. The, cool. stuff, <laughs> the stuff that I saw when Riot had, uh, had spoken about it, it was something I saw briefly on MMO Champion. They were talking like he was working with League of Legends and it, they didn't even seem to hint that it was a different title. They they mm. said uh, a game this big has plenty of room to grow, uh, so it kind of made it sound like he was working on League. It didn't really seem like there was any other hidden agenda. Yeah, mm. that sounds about right. All right, so I think that's it for for uh, the WoW news. Uh, do you want to head into some Hearthstone stuff? Sure. Do yep. you want to pull up the Cracker Pack while we talk about... It's all, it's all ready. It's all ready. Let's do the Cracker Pack, then. That's you want to do the Cracker Pack? Let's, let's do that. Let's do the Cracker Pack. Look at this. A whole bunch. Would we get rare? All right. Two rares. I didn't see the one in the bottom left. But... Oh. All right. So we got we got Scarlet Crusader. It's a 3-1 Divine Shield. Uh, Phil. You always throw the Hearthstone noob at this stuff. All That's right. right. Let's talk about it. <laughs> okay. How do you feel about this? How do I feel about this? Uh, three mana nets you a 3-1. Okay, that's really not that great. Throw in Divine Shield, which gives you pretty much immunity to the first thing that hits it. So, I mean, I guess it's worth it. Uh, I can't see it being bad, but you know what? I don't know these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're you're about right. It, it's fine. It's not anything special. It's not spectacular. It saves itself at least from one thing. So, uh, three mana, three power. It's uh, if you can buff it. If you know you have five mana, you know you can throw some permanent health buff on it right after that. I mean that's a all classes card, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah so. It's fine. It's fine. It's nothing. Yeah. It's not gonna like win you a game, but it, it's okay. See, I it's, think it's, it's it's perfect where it's at for in, in terms of mana cost and all that. Because if you look at it and be like, oh, I kind of wish it was a two mana card. Do you know how overpowered that card would be if it costs two mana? Oh, that would, oh yeah, yeah. way too early for that. And if it costs four mana, would you guys even consider playing it? No. So it's pretty much perfect right where it's sitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, guess so. Just- Yep. It, and it's I think it's good against pretty much every class except for a mage. Not like you can control who your opponent is, but you typically would rather not having that card against the mage because they'll just yeah, ping it of... and throw a 1-1 one, one minion at it and it's gone and it kind of it cleared off the 1-1 one, one minion, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. The way I look at these cards is typically you're going to get some sort of... Anything with Divine Shield, you're going to get some variable, variant of, of a 2-for-1, right? Yep. 
usually. Unless they, they have that other card that uh, sucks out all the uh, divine shields on the board and yeah, gives everything the blood plus. The, yes. the, the epic blood knight. That's yeah, that's true. All right, what else we got? What else we got here? We got. Let's go. Oh look, I see a thing. <laughs> weird. Uh. Zista, why don't you take this guy? Argent Squire, 1-1 one, one Divine Shield for 1 mana. Um, It's pretty damn good for its mana cost. Um, Works best, I think, with a, a Paladin deck, but any class can really play it. Uh, for 1 mana, you're basically getting something that's living through 2 hits. So, uh, compared to some of the other 1 mana cost cards, you have, what, the... Uh, the 2-1 Voodoo Priest that heals, and <laughs> for one mana, you're typically going to end up playing that on the first turn and healing nothing, so... Um, yeah, it's fine. So, it's fine. I think this card is pretty good where it's at. I it's like another it. common card that just holds its ground, I think. Yep. Uh, it's good in aggro, it's good in... Uh, like you said, the Paladin will work. Anything that can buff it, it makes it even better. Uh, so... I don't think it's it's bad. It's decent in arena, decent in, in even in uh, ranked or, or constructed. So it's tough for a one drop. That divine shield just makes it tough. So yeah, yep. it's it's not great anymore because the main purpose of it was to keep it there, and then you just buff it. You play yeah. like a dagger and dwarf or something, and then it turns into a scarlet crusader. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Yeah. What else we got? Squishy, you take this next one. All right. Dun, da, da. Interesting card, and you know, like months ago, this might have been thought of differently. But oh we'll yeah, um, the Hunter Revolution's going on right now. <laughs> yes, and so this card is now kind of broken, and I'm sure with all the for whatever reason, suddenly the Secret Hunter or some version of it has popped up all over the place, and so this card is now a freaking beast, which is why I'm considering running. At least one ooze in my deck, yet I can't figure out where to place it. Mm. But this card, really, really good. Yeah, it, it kind of, like I said, if I'd asked you two months ago. I'd be like, like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's, you know, it's 3-2, three, 3, it's not great, but whatever, you could use it if you need it. Now? No, now it's a staple of that secret <laughs> deck, which is it's oddly decent. And, kind of uh, even usable in the Unleash the Hounds. Because Unleash the Hounds still uses a decent amount of secrets, oh, so yeah. it's fine. You get it out there, it either dies in two turns, which in, in some cases is fine. That's okay. And in, in other circumstances, it lives for well Ever. beyond what it should be what it should be using. Uh, Especially be if you're more. against another paladin, uh, another hunter or a paladin or a mage with yep. lots of secrets, then get a permanent weapon. If you play against Zista's uh, Mage Secrets deck, that bow will live forever. <laughs> I was just going to say, can we put this in my Mage deck? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, uh, Zista, do you want to take this one or you want me to take it? Uh, we'll let you take the last one since this is your last show. So I'll take this okay. next one. Right. Shadow oh, Madness. Oh, Golden Rare! <laughs> <laughs> um. I like it. I like it for what it is. For for four mana, you get to, or with an attack of three or less, actually. Eh, I don't know. That seems a little high cost. I, now that I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm look. Put it this way: this is a card I used to not like. Uh, and then, uh, the way it can be used <laughs> to trade off their own minions. Yeah. It. I think it's okay. I don't really enjoy it like i don't really like playing it because a lot of times it's it just ends up you you can't use it especially if you're late game you're just right. like oh well it doesn't do anything that's good uh but i i can see it being useful sometimes i know there's a lot of priests that that actually do run it i think even squishy runs his priest deck which is the priest decks are not really anything spectacular right now i deleted but... my priest deck <laughs> huh i deleted my priest deck yeah, exactly. Yeah, priests right now are a little rough. Right now, my priest deck is Rando and Win. Oh, nice. <laughs> that nice. is my priest deck. I, if I need to get wins with the priest, I just, you know what? Everything is going to be random, and I might win, I might lose. Nice. Yeah, but this card, most of the time, it'll go for a two for one. Yeah. And then, you know, sometimes if you run it with Brewmasters, you get to take their minion, which is awesome. 
or um, if it's like a harvest golem, there's a lot of harvest golems these days. You can take mm. the harvest golem, beat it, and then you get the two one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, That's nice. Now here's the thing: like this, this would be like if there was something like uh, all right. I'm gonna relate this to Magic: The Gathering a little bit here. There's some cards in Magic: The Gathering which allow you to uh, to bounce or flicker something. Bouncing or flickering just means you remove it from comp, you move remove it from play, and then it comes back into play, right? So you would play something like this, remove it from play, put it back into play, get its battle cry, and since you left play and come back under your control, it's now your card. Mm-hmm. So if something like if you could combo that out, just do something like that, that would be an amazing card. But I think it just lacks some of the other things that may not exist in Hearthstone yet. Right now, it's 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 okay, but I, I don't know if I'd really enjoy playing it too much. Yeah. Okay, let's hit me. Let's hit me with this last one. Is it is it Doom Doomsayer? No. Oh, the Sea Giant. Oh, All look right. At that. Uh, this is a ten mana, eight eight. Costs one less for each other minion on the battlefield. This is another card that if you had asked me what a month or two ago, I'd have been yeah. like, yeah, it's not it's not good. Like you might be able to use it and get away with it. Like if you get it in arena, maybe it's an eight eight. So mm, the worst, it's an eight eight for ten. All right, it's not great. Nowadays, you can use those in that uh, Hunter deck that we were just talking about. Even Warlock at this yep. point. I hate the Warlock card deck with the Drake, Sea Giant, Molten Giant. It's like, big game Hunter, where are you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I See, guess I'm that having the other problem with Warlock, because I, I hate Murloc Warlock decks. That's what I was using. I, I'm changing it now. <laughs> Murlocs. Every time I see a, a Murloc in Constructed, I rage and almost want to just concede. I don't even care if it's like one Murloc through the whole thing. Okay. I like rage. See, I was at that point at one point. Except then, I made a troll deck and put in two Hungry Crabs. And all I would do is just look for a Warlock, Murloc deck. If not, I'd just concede. Find a war- Murloc, Warlock deck, get a Hungry Crab, and then eat their thing, and they would concede on the first turn. Yeah. So well, no, satisfying. Just- yeah. Well, what you could do as well, as I've seen other people do this, is they would run war- Murlocs in their own deck when it was becoming a big thing. They would just run Murlocs in their deck. They'd be like, this is similar to what I was going to use anyway, so uh, it's not quite as good. But if I run up against the Murloc Warlock deck, when they buff their Murlocs, they buff mine. Yeah. <laughs> so you just get ahead because you typically have more removal than the Warlock. And, uh, yep, that's the thing. All right, so that's our that's our cracker pack. Sea Giant, much better nowadays. That's oh, yeah. that's that's what I'm gonna say about that card. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of these uh, changes that they've had. Uh, this recent recent Hearthstone patch. Uh, we've got what the reason that the, one of the reasons the Hunter deck is is making its its comeback. Uh, they changed Unleash the Hounds. Uh, Unleash the Hounds now costs two, down from four. A change like that is big enough to make any, like you said earlier, Zista, uh, with the Scarlet Crusader. You change that mana cost by one in either direction, it's not a very good card. Right. Or it's an amazing card. Yep. You do that to unleash the Hounds, it all of a sudden becomes uh, I, I, like really, really good. Um, Almost too good, in my opinion. I was going to say, how do, you, how, do you feel about, how do you feel about this change? Yeah. It's too drastic. I think three would have been better. Is <laughs> yeah. that... I mean, like I said, the combo that gets most people at this time is Leroy Jenkins, and that puts three minions on the board. And then you unleash the Hounds. So they have two minions guaranteed, which is another two minions on the board. And then you see Giant. It's very, very annoying. Yep. You put that with that Snake Trap? Awesome. Yeah. Snake Trap helps with that? Yep. Or just card draw. That's a, I for a while actually I was I had switched my seek my hunter secrets deck into an unleash the hounds deck before this change had happened, and all I would do is you know you know kind of keep pressure on them with the the hero power, whenever I could, constantly lower their health, and then put out you know keep board control with multi shot arcane shot, or by hound mastering something if I like a, a random minion. But I would have the snake trap out, and as soon as someone hit the snake trap, if I would let them get a board full of big things, I would just unleash the hounds and then drop raid leader, alpha wolf, all sorts of buff minions, and then hit him in the face for like 23 in one turn <laughs> or something. Yeah. 
but it, it relies on the other player, so I, I don't know. I haven't run across too many of the Unleash the Hounds, the new Unleash the Hounds deck, so I'd like to, to see for myself how, how bad I think it is. All right, let's go on to the Mage had a card change. They finally changed Pyroblast. Cost mm-hmm. 10 up from 8. <laughs> Zist is shaking his head. Hold on. Zist is shaking his head. What's going on, Zist? What's, what's wrong? I'm not happy with this change. <laughs> I, I don't disagree with it, because it needed to be changed, but I'm not happy with it. I can see that. That's I would exactly, have rather... That is exactly the reaction you should have when someone does their nerfs correctly. I would have rather to... had them keep it at 8 mana and lower it to 8 damage. I would have rather had them do that. Nah, yeah, but yeah. then isn't Fireball 6 damage? Yeah. That's another that's... problem that I think we may need to touch on, but... That's four mana for six damage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I mean... I don't know if I... I, I fireball, agree with Fireball, change. Frostbolt are my favorite combination. Yeah, that's a pretty nasty damage combination. That's I mean, 15 damage in one turn right there. So for I, eight mana, you could get 12 damage out using two cards versus eight mana getting 10 damage. Now it's 10 mana for 10 damage. But I don't, I don't think you can look at it that I don't think you can look at it that in that manner. I think you also have to take into account... How, like, the mage is supposed to be a very bursty champion, right? You're supposed to be yeah. able to put that much... If you, like, if, if you van- vanilla everything out to be the, ex- same, the exact same thing, then there's no difference be- except for hero powers yeah. as to what you're, what you're picking. So, <clears throat> I don't mind the bursty nature of the mage. So, the, pi- the, the fireball is, is something you, you, you get with that, right? Uh... But I think Pyroblast was a little bit too much in that extreme. The ability to, to uh, play Pyroblast. Like you, and, Here's and the other alternative other they could have done. They could have left it at 8 mana and turned it into a legendary. There's so you only have one of them? Yeah. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, right now I think they have an issue with that because each class only has one legendary. Right, but that's something they could look into changing. Oh, yeah. That's an yeah. idea. Yeah. There are many ways to solve this, like spell taunts, like a grounding totem. I would not like, be opposed to every class having one legendary minion and one legendary spell. Yeah, that may be something you'll see in the future, to be honest. Likely, but, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I think but I think this change actually hit the mark where as their, their blizzard change and their <laughs> change was just I kind of like, I don't understand why you did that because it didn't really do much to that. Yeah. Much. Like it, it, it was little... enough to be an annoyance, believe me. No, I, I get, I get the frost, I get the frost. That the frost thing is is a change, but the change they needed to make right off the bat was this one. I think, yeah. I think that was the card that needed to be to be fixed. I think it was ice block, and they still haven't touched that. Yeah, uh, ice block's kind of annoying. You know, I know you have ice block active, except I can't do anything except attempt to kill you, and I know it's going to trigger. I, I think one thing that would make it interesting is if they make Ice Block trigger for overkill damage. Meaning, if you deal exactly the amount of damage needed to hit zero, Ice Block will not trigger. So there's still some interaction, but it is not just, oh, great, he played Ice Block. Well, yeah. gotta wait till or next I turn. See, like, I could see something like, um, if you hit, uh, if you hit, if they manage to kill you, right, it then Im- it immediately puts you back to a certain pers- a certain amount of health. Like, instead of just saying, oh, you're immune to death for the rest of the turn, you now have yeah. five health or something or whatever they deem necessary. I don't know. It, that'd be interesting to talk about, I think, in the future. What is sure. the uh, squishy nose? I, I don't remember the names of cards very well, but the, the secret for the mage that uh, instead of when a, a spell is cast directly onto one of your minions, it goes to the 1-3 of... Spellbender. Spellbender. I had a Spellbender um, secret up, and uh, I was, you know, working my opponent down or whatever, and he clearly had me, right? There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I had him down to one mana, and he had me on the next turn. Like, I, I couldn't do any more damage, or one health. I, I could, uh, One health would have finished him off. I could not do it. Uh, he had done everything he could to try to get my secret exposed, and he couldn't do it. So then, when I got him down to one mana, he had enough to fatal me. And he goes, well played and conceded. Without even trying to trigger ice block, because he was positive that that secret was ice block. And I didn't even have an ice block in my deck. 
I could not stop laughing. <laughs> I was laughing for a good 5-10 minutes. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I just won this match because he thought that was Ice Block. Like, he had me. Completely had hard. me. <laughs> That's that mind game the secrets can play. Mind games. Yes, mind games. All right, let's go on to this Warlock change. This is a little. This is an odd one. This is a, an odd change. Uh, Warlock Blood Imp is now an O one. It's down from one a one one, and it now reads stealth like it always has. At the end of your turn, give another random friendly minion plus one health. So now it's a stealth young priestess yep. with no attack. Yep. Yep. Hmm. You guys, I know most people thought Blood Imps were annoying, but do you think that this was a necessary change? It was necessary, but it made it better. better. It's better. <clears throat> Hello. It is much better. I, well, I, wait, I, I, that seems weird, because it's, ne- it's, it's, it's a nerf, but a buff, in a way. It nerfs the early aggro, but it buffs control decks. That, that's basically it. Because aggro won't have the instant plus one health, but control will have the probably more than plus one by the time that you're able to remove it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. It was an interesting change to me. Yeah. I didn't. I wasn't sure that that was really a needed nerf in my mind. I, I think maybe they could have done some other things to change it, but I haven't played it yet. So uh, I'll, I'll definitely get a chance to play around with it and, and see how it feels. Uh, I don't think it's terrible. I just think it's. In one, a kind of a weird change. Not the weirdest change that we'll talk about, by the way. <laughs> we're, we're, most we're people running weirder. the Wild Pyromancer. Is that the card? Is that yeah. his name? They were running that in the deck pretty much just to counter that imp. Yep. Uh, you is... run that to counter a lot yeah. of things. But the thing is, if there were two on the board, it wouldn't kill it. Right. Yep. And the other thing, you can now equality, and it will kill everything on the board still. Because before, it would equality, but it would be one plus the blood imp. Mm-hmm. So and the blood imp cannot buff itself, correct? Yeah, but they can buff each other. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. So, so could, ideal guess... hand would be blood imp coin blood imp turn one second player. <laughs> uh, maybe, I guess. But then if he because then they both start with two health immediately. No, and then you'd have to pass next turn again, so they go zero three. That would bring them out of kill range, mm-hmm. and no one plays mage anymore, so there's no chance of a flame strike. Oh, mm-hmm. I have been playing my warrior a lot more. I'm, I'm probably going to be making a hundred back <laughs> soon. Yeah, so if this Randuin will we'll be able to kill it. Exactly. I will. I'm going to yellow bomber the shit out of those stealth minions. So this, can I ask? Are you are you fading? You feel faint? I, I'm not feeling so well. I think uh, someone might have gone back in time and maybe changed my past. Oh, Marty <laughs> McFly. Have, have you been doing a lot of time travel? Uh, not me. Someone, apparently, in my family. Maybe my son that I don't have yet. Oh. Whoa. It's because of I stole his cat. This is the softest cat I'm holding right now. See? I the cat was... went back in time and wants I me sp- out of the picture. Mike, you want to you... Mike, you want to hand me that cat? Yeah, hold on. Josie, I'm... Oh, 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 she's attacking me. She does not want to be held right now. Oh, oh. Let's pass her off to me. I... No. I lost it. <sighs> hold on, here, I'm throwing her off screen. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, I got her. Oh, <laughs> hi, Josie. <laughs> the plot twist in at the end of season finale of season one. <laughs> oh, Josie didn't want to be held. She ran off. No, she was getting... She was comfy and falling asleep in my arms, and then as soon as she sensed freedom, it was like, ah! <laughs> so, so what can we do to fix your timeline, Sophis? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Has anyone, does anyone have any ideas? Um, drink a lot of Pepto-Bismol. Uh, He's got some of that, right? No. no. I don't have the power. Okay. Let's, let's, we'll get back to the, we'll fix me later, maybe. Let's talk about some warrior changes. We got uh, Warsong Commander has been changed. Uh, it's been reworked. So it says, whenever you play minimum to three or less attack, give it charge. Do you like 
hate, like, hate, like, hate. Indifferent. I don't know what. No one ever played it, so I didn't care. War Song Commander? No one ever played it, except no, for the I, one I think turn. You're, you're oh, thinking of a different card. I think, you're, I think you're thinking of a different card. This is the card that used to give everything charge. <clears throat> this is the card that the reason the one For the turn warrior turn deck. Thing. Yeah, and it no longer does anything over three attack, meaning it can't do Molten Giants anymore. Yep. Now it'll just turn warriors into aggro. <laughs> so funny, fu- funny story. It nerfed one version of the one turn kill, but it yes. didn't nerf the other version of this, one. Turn. Yes. You can still one turn kill as a warrior with this card. Uh, with this card? Yeah, you can. Oh, the only one I know. Uh, it's raging. It's raging worgen inner fire inner fire. Um, or sorry, it's it's warsong commander raging worgen inner fire or whatever the thing is inner rage inner rage inner rage. Um, and then Faceless Manipulator. Hmm. Well, you can also... I think. You can also Alex Straza Gorhal. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember what it is. I don't play one turn, so Warrior's dumb. But they're not, they're not nearly as good. I'll put it that way. Right. It, it's so much harder to do that. So, I think this card is... Did, they, they changed it to, into uh, to a card that's actually... That actually might... It's still a good card for uh, Warrior Aggro. Like, you can still run that, and, and it can be effective. But they definitely fixed the uh, the one-turn kill Warrior thing. That, that deck used to drive me insane, because I built it, and it was boring as hell to play. So I stopped playing it, because it was awful. Like, I didn't even feel good when I went to... I've, I've dealt... I did 30 damage to someone in one turn after just not doing anything the whole game. Yeah. It was terrible. It wasn't fun to play. It wasn't fun to play against. It was just awful. So, um, let's go. They got another one changed. Charge. Uh, Warriors had charge change. Charge now costs three mana and reads. Give a friendly minion to attack and charge. Another nerf to the one token kill warrior. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's still a good card, I think. Uh, well. Not really. It's okay. It's not zero mana, so they can't, like, just throw it out there and, right. and whatever, but. It's, yeah, it's it's, a, it's okay. It's still all right. All right, let's move on to these neutral cards. My favorite. Uh, these next two are a little. Uh, they're not. Just a little odd, I think. I don't. I guess it's good. I don't know. We have abusive sergeant mm-hmm. and dark iron dwarf. They both now read the exact same way. They just have different mana costs and different base values. So they have. They now read give a minion plus two attack until end of turn. The difference is Abusive Sergeant used to only be friendly minions. Now it can be anyone. And Dark Iron Dwarf used to be permanent. I'd, so, say, I'd say it's a buff to Abusive Sergeant because you can now use it with Dark Iron Dwarf. Or, excuse me. Um, Big Game Hunter, other attack modifier, death, uh, Shadow of Death stuff. But Dark Iron Dwarf can be a buff or nerf depending on how you use to play it. And the board state. Yeah, I, I think I, I feel the same way. Because before, sometimes the Dark Rain Dwarf, you're like, crap, I can't play this 4-4 because then I make his guy too big. Yeah. yeah. And then it stays that way. It's not like it's gone at the end of the turn, so you're just like, okay, there you go. It's fine. Uh, it also rewards you sometimes, I think, like priests can use it. See, I didn't even catch this change, so it's it. only until the end of the turn now for the Dark Iron Dwarf. The Abusive Sergeant was always that way. Yep. Yes, but now the abuse of sergeant, you can do it to non-friendly units. Right. So, hmm. uh, just to, I think I don't know. Like I think they just wanted to make them more. They said uh, this gives you more more options, basically. Uh, but I don't I don't think they did it as like a balance issue. I don't think it was a balance problem. So, um, what else do we have? This might be the most puzzling. No. I won't say this one's the most puzzling. The next one might be, but this one, uh, right up there, Defender of Argus is now a 2-3, down from a 3-3. Most worthless change in a... You think? It did not do crap. I mean, Every... it didn't do anything, in turn, but the card as a 3-3 that gives plus 1, plus 1 to both minions adjacent to it, the card was pretty overpowered. It... It was running in everybody's deck. If you didn't have that, like, it was kind of surprising, right? Yeah. 
So, it nerfed the card slightly. It, it's a little l less powerful. Uh, I think it's still a necessity in the decks. I don't think it changed that at all. But, uh, I don't know. Being they able to deal wrong, a little less attack is nice. They made the wrong change if they wanted to nerf that. You mean they should have yeah, gone the other think... way, 3-2? No. I think they should have made the buff maybe plus 0, plus 1. Or plus 1, plus 0. Because yeah, most, people, most people are using it for the taunt. Right. Yeah. Not... I, don't, I don't actually think this was a needed change. It's still used in a lot of decks, but not all of them. I put it this way. Like, if you look at my decks right now, I have all very... As far as com competitiveness goes, I run one of every every class. And this is maybe in half of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't make the cut in most of my decks. It, it's just. But for the, the half that, that are in there, do you have two running in there, or just one? Um, no, I have one that has just one. Okay. Uh, but the decks that need it need it. Right. Like it, it, that it, in those decks, you want that card. But if you're not building it for that, for for something that needs the defense, uh, yep. if you're just running some, like if you're running more kill spells or you're running more offensively, then. You don't really need it, I don't think. It, it can be okay in an offensive deck. It did use it, I think, initially in some of the Warlock aggro decks, so because it gives that plus one. Yeah. The problem is taunts are usually very expensive, and they have terrible stats. So this yeah. just adds taunt to decent minions, which is what everybody wants, because that means it forces the opponent to make bad trades. Right, yep. So, it's still a great card. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's, let's talk about the most confusing, the confusing nerf. <laughs> the patch novice engineer uh it's now a one one down from a one two anyone uh um have any insight as to why this was nerfed <laughs> i agree with the change um it, look at it this way you have what is it the druid card uh is it wrath where you could choose to either deal three damage or one and draw a card mm-hmm so it, you look at, let's just say, a 1.1, 1, 1 per 1 uh, mana for damage, right? So for 3 mana, you're dealing 1 damage and you're getting draw a card. So the draw card is, is worth 2 in this case, right? In terms of wrath? I guess you could look at it that way, yeah. So you're getting a, for 1 mana, you're getting a card and you're getting 1 damage out of it. So... It seemed like the card either should have been a two mana cost for a, a one two with a card draw on drop, or nerf the the health down, um, so it could be killed easier. Uh, it, it made a little sense to me. Maybe uh, okay. Maybe they went the wrong direction with it. Maybe they should have upped it one point in mana cost. But I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that this needed to be touched at all. Me and Squishy have a theory. Okay. I, I have a different theory, actually. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Oh, is it that... Okay, I know what theory you're thinking of. But, um, okay, so here's my theory. So the one drops that most people play, Lepronome, Argent Squire, Worgen Infiltrator. Right? Yep. And uh, Voodoo, Voodoo Doctor, but no one ever plays that because they heal yourself from 30 to 30, or, like, other stuff that no one ever plays turn one. But if you think about it, all of those cards are countered by Novice Engineer. They will make a 1 for 0 trade by all turn 1 drops. Because you're drawing a card out of it. Mm -hmm. Now, you can no longer... Uh, an Argent Squire will beat it. Um, and other class cards. But I think it's a good nerf for the game, personally. No. Now that I thought about it more... Yeah, I guess. I could see that uh, as far as a balance thing. I don't... It seems like an odd... It just seems like a very odd change. I don't know. It's not something that... It's not going to change anything as far as, like, am I going to play this card? Yeah. It's like, as far as, do you want to play this card in your deck? Yes, I always want to play this card in my deck. So, I guess if that's what they were aiming for, then they, they, did, they did a good job. It just seems odd to me. They... <clears throat> They have forced more people into uh, into Nat Pagel, which means more money for them. So, I mean, that could be an underlying. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's fair enough. All right. So, what about uh, this? This last change that they made is uh, Sylvanas, Lady Sylvanas Windrunner now costs six up from five. 
You guys okay with this too? I thought it was a good change. Um, card is pretty beefy. You get a when upon death you get a random minion. Yeah, random is random, but if there's only one minion out on the board, you know which minion you're getting. It's the same way the hunters uh, destroy a random minion card works. Uh, you you can purposely use Sylvanas to trade off to kill something to make sure you get the other target or, or yeah. whatever. So, um, turn five that you can pretty much... Uh, there's not going to be a shit ton of minions on the board. Or if you're doing proper crowd control and trade-offs, there shouldn't be. Um, so around turn five, you were pretty much guaranteed to completely destroy their board and take whatever minion they had left. Uh, turn six, it, it kind of evens it out a little bit, makes it a little more fair, in my opinion. It really doesn't do much at all. I mean, it still makes it still makes them trade inefficiently. Um, I mean, playing it versus a Ragnaros is great. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I think I, I think with me it's it was uh this one was is a little bit odd as well it's just uh the six mana thing you're not really playing sylvanas on turn five like that's not when you play her if you do there's other ways to get rid of whatever you need to get rid of yeah uh, there's just it seems a little weird like you play her on turn five you're going to not get anything in return i'll put it that way because whoa whoa whoa, whoa. what about a turn four double innervate ragnaros <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Maybe you'll get the Ragnaros, but maybe not. They might have something else on the board by that time if, <laughs> if you're that far behind. So you might run her into Ragnaros and get a one-one novice engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so it, to her, it, it's fine with me. Just a little weird. Another one of those that was like, eh, okay, I guess. I'm not ever really playing. Never going on turn five. Going, damn! I really wish I could throw her out there because a lot of times too. She doesn't do anything right well, away. The other thing to consider in this case is what other five mana cost cards can you pair it up with that was making it devastating? So by raising it up one mana, it eliminates those five mana cost cards out of the picture because you cannot play them same turn. So that's the other thing you have to look at when they're taking these these nerfs into consideration. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. There's not five much. is not a good number. No, it's, it's not. not. Turn. It's not, but I'm saying on turn 10... If you're using a Sylvanas Windrunner that had five mana cost, pairing it with another uh, high cost mana card, you know, around five mana, right. uh, that was making a devastating combination. Um, I don't think there is any. There is. There is. That's what I'm saying. There is no good neutral five cost. Is is there think, like uh, no? I think anything that Starfire you're going to pair or something? with is is either lower or much higher, and you're you're going to need like Interfade or something. No, but the I'm old... thinking I'm thinking a Starfire. Okay. Right? What if if you're running in a druid deck, Starfire is five mana cost. Correct. If I'm yeah. if I remember correctly. No, 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 no. It's Starfall. Starfall. Um, mm -hmm. and it deals six damage. Five. Five, five and draw a card. Uh, no, it's five or two to all. Oh, that's that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, couldn't you effectively, if they only had one minion on the board, be it Ragnaros? Couldn't you play yes. Sylvanas and kill your own minion with it? Yes. So. But there's certain combinations like that that would be the reason, and and raising her up one mana would be better than raising Starfall up one mana. I don't think that's something they're worried about. If you have those no. two cards in your hands and they have that specific board state, then they don't care about nerfing you just for that. But most of most of the plays of Sylvanas were Sylvanas Defender of Argus mm -hmm. for the taunt, Sylvanas Shadow Flame, so you instantly board wipe for five damage, and anything lives, you get to take it. Like, which was amazing combo, which no one ever runs still for whatever reason. Which is four mana. There's that's like the only one that I think that's fine. Still a lot, yeah. Most of them, like right. you said, like the one that I like to do if I'm doing something like that is Sylvanas Defender of Argus, and that's still completely doable. And even before when you do that, you still we have one mana left over. I, <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing anything with that one mana. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm sure, maybe, I'm sure that they're pretty, uh, I mean, they have smart people to work on this, I think. So, uh, I'm sure there's a reason. I, I mean, we can look at their, their notes here, but basically, what they just said is, uh, it had power and stats that made it a bit too powerful compared to other five cross cards, which made it automatically included in many decks. If that's their reason right along there, I'm not, I don't, I don't agree. She's a legendary. 
She's a five drop legendary. You want typically if you want a good legendary, if 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 you made a good legendary, that's what you want. Like you want to be able to put that into a deck because it's an awesome legendary. I, uh, but they said they want players to have an option of what cards they put in their decks. Like to me, a legendary is you get extra stuff for getting that legendary. And that's part of it. So it seems a little weird that that's specifically the reason. I think that's just a generic way for them to say, oh, we thought it was too good. I, they just I, made I it think, a paragraph. I think they're explaining it in a way that everybody can understand it. But secretly, I believe that they know what they're buffing in their thing. That, that's yeah. my understanding of it. I think they know what they're doing. But explaining that to someone who just picked up her stuff, like it's a casual game. Someone who just yeah. picked it up and explaining it in terms of value and all like the other experience terms, they're not going to understand it. Yeah. So we're yeah. they're they're cheaping out with the. Um, it's too powerful for yeah. five mana cards for five yeah, mana. That's cards. it. Too many people were running it. Okay, you're too tall to play this card. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. That's what it's. That was one of our theories. They, I think we, they have a guy of Blizzard that just goes, all right, this. They just looks at numbers and he's <laughs> like, all right, this card is run in like ninety percent of the decks that are out there. Let's just nerf it. Why? I don't know. They use it a lot. Let's just get. <laughs> let's just fix it. Well, I think uh, that guy exists. I think he does. I'm looking. I'm. You so let me know. Like you're too tall to play this card, but, but uh, I'm not tall enough to ride their emotional roller coaster ride. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's all the Hearthstone stuff. We did it. We made it through the Hearthstone stuff. Woo. All right, Diablo 3. Beta started. That's it. Starcraft. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even want to touch it. Just, it started. He's, okay, Starcraft. He's fading out. He has little times and stuff. This is true. This is true. This this is true. much time. we got to figure out how to reverse this. Did anyone get into the beta for Diablo 3? I checked. I did not. No. I don't think I have. I think uh, Luke did, didn't he? I don't think so. He might tell us. I don't know. Maybe not. Luke, did you get into the beta? Anyways, but tell us on. in 15 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, none of us are in the beta, so we can't really talk about it that much. Uh, NDA. Other than like when I I did get a chance to play it a little bit in, in, uh, at at BlizzCon, and you were like the only fun. one. The Crusader class seem really fun so uh, i'm looking forward to the game itself maybe i'll get in i'm sure i'll get into beta at some point or See, i'm hoping where were you when i was looking to play diablo 3 at uh at blizzcon i was actually because we were hanging out you know the our, our group or whatever and uh what is it we had just come off from the the warcraft uh draenor uh dungeon uh beta that we were doing <clears throat> and as uh gary was gonna go off do something we were like what, what are we gonna do like What's our next stop? I was like, well, do you guys want to go over and try Diablo 3? We'll go on, like, the PlayStation and try it and see what it feels <laughs> like. And everybody's just like, and let's go play Heroes again. <laughs> <laughs> so I never even I never even got to touch uh, the beta. I, I, would, uh, I would have loved to see how it played on the, con on the console. Because uh, I'm actually... It's a hangover day for me, I don't know. Did you try it on the console? I did. I got to play it on the console. How good. does how does it feel versus the, the pretty good? PC? It feel, if if you've ever played the PlayStation uh, version, no, I did not uh, of the original or Diablo two. Uh, it was very similar. I mean, it works on a console. It's not like the game is very complicated, right? It's a pretty simple <laughs> game. It's a. It seems like targeting would be more difficult on the console. No, it's not. It's the 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 the, the way the maybe specific targeting, but there's so many like. Like area of effect type right. combat things. Would that... would you have one joystick to move, and then is it another joystick to move your cursor, or do you not have a cursor? No cursor. It's auto targeting. So if you're facing, you basically position your character it, to look at those. It's a twin stick shooter, basically, in a way. Like that's mm. the controls, right? Kinda, yeah. Sort of. Uh, it's pretty easy, and, and a lot of the like I said, a lot of the classes have have like cleaves or AOE ranged attacks or something like that. Ranged might, I could see maybe that's a little bit harder to do, but even then, a lot of the ranged classes, like, have, most of their stuff is, is area of effect based. Right. So, I would have you just loved. look for, it, it's pretty easy. It's, it, 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 it feels very natural, so that's, that's good. It almost feels like it was meant to be played on a console, to be completely honest. Uh, I that's look good. forward to when that comes out and you're able to sit down with four people, like, in your, in the room, like, in the yeah. same room and just, like, mash zombies but see now how bad. would that be with uh clutter on the screen and stuff like i don't know like have, have you played the 
any of the Mario games for for Wii U? Yeah. You know, have you played four player mode on that? Yeah, you know how it's cluttered not those screens get. No, it's not as bad as that. It's it's better. It's it's just better made for that. Like you can. Uh, I don't I don't really know how to explain. I think if Can't Heels is here, he, me and him went and played it, and uh, it was we both played it at the same time, and it was wasn't bad. It was like I said, it actually feels almost well, like that's the way it was meant to be played. Well, the thing with the Mario, like I'm just using it as a point of reference because we both <laughs> played that. The thing with the Mario is you play like two to three players, and it's okay. As soon as you add that fourth player in there, it starts getting a little hectic because people are on one guy's too slow, one guy's too fast, the other two are in the middle and the yeah. screen, like, it's all over the place. So when when you start getting that in Diablo, like, what if one person wants to go get this chest over in the top here and everybody else is running That's a this That's way? a console thing. Like, you just don't. You just can't. Yeah. You all have to work together, and you have to just have a game plan going, like, we're going over here. So Let's go that way. What is the it camera was, follow was, player all one? All I had to do is use my mouth and talk to, <laughs> talk no, to I, the angels next to no, me. Hey, we're going that. up here. Okay. I understand that, but I mean, like, does the camera follow player one, or does it not move unless all the players um, are centered? Like, I think it followed player one and two player with multiple people. I think it follows the majority of people unless you're both going, unless, you know, you split in half, and then I right. think it, then it just defaults back to player one. So, like, you just have to know that, like, you right. have to follow player one. He's the guy calling the shots. Okay. Uh, See, I actually, I think I'd prefer to play it on the console. Um, when we were at BlizzCon, I, I did get the hands-on with the, the Hearthstone tablet. I, I think Hearthstone is a game made for the tablet. Like, it just felt so much smoother to play on that than it did playing on the computer. Uh, I yeah, prefer to play it nice. on the tablet. And Diablo kind of seems like one of those games that I, I probably would prefer to play on the console. My, yeah, it does. It feels good on the console. I love My gripe with it the is the same thing, though. I like it to play with. But I, I also feel like I might own both copies, to be completely honest, because I might like play like when 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 you, we do play, we get our Diablo three like fixes. Right. Like mm-hmm. we'll be like, I really want to play Diablo three right now. So then like me, Squishy, Phil, uh, Luke or whoever will get together and just play Diablo for a few nights in a row. We're just doing okay, nothing hold, but mindless. Hold on. Before like... you buy Diablo three on the console at the end of the month, this game called Octodad is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> He's very, is very Octodad. familiar with Octodad. I am very, I'm a master of Octodad. He maybe loves, he loves it. tentacles. Maybe I'll even stream it. I'll do uh, like a special stream. Yeah, I it's, won't it's, be streaming as much these days, but I maybe I'll do that. It's you, at the end of the month, so you have to be ready for it. Here's my question though, so do you do you have a PS4? I do. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't know you got one. It, it's it's also just good. sitting there. I use it for a Blu-ray player right now because there's no games. It, it's mine, also coming out for the PC, so no worries. You'll get to play your Octodad and get your games. Mine is actually uh, <laughs> sitting upstairs in, at the in my brother's room, and uh, he's been playing a lot of NBA uh, 2K Live. Yeah, there's a lot of games that I don't care about right, yeah. right now. So <laughs> I'm like, I, I would be playing Battlefield 4 maybe more, but like... Uh... Even the multiplayer and that, like, I can't group with someone to play it. So yeah. it's really annoying. I don't know. I just as it, it just stands right now, I I will not be touching my PS4 until Watch Dogs, and then uh, the next game or games I think is going to be Final Fantasy 15, which is scheduled for December right now, um, and then uh, the, Destiny, the Division, the District, Destiny, the Division, Destiny, the Division Destiny. District. Yeah, I don't know which one. Um, what what it's really called, but guys, um, I feel like Patrick Swayze right now. You are Patrick Swayze. <laughs> um, you're I, are Just... you uh Bill Cosby? <laughs> Can I call you Ghost Dad? Ghost Dad? No, I don't feel like. Is it Bill Crosby? I feel that like Patrick movie... Swayze started on it was on tv because we were watching something and it just came on that channel and of all people mia just sat down and watched that movie intently like which one like the whole movie which one ghost dad no whatever the hell it's called the one where patrick ghost. swayze gets killed and he's a yeah ghost whoopi goldberg yeah. <laughs> good movie and she watched it from start to end like i've never seen her sit through a movie even a cartoon movie like that before like she was well, fascinated with it we better hurry up then I'm I'm losing touch. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna need Whoopi to come talk to me soon. So you know, it's too long. I think I think because you're going so fast, we need to skip our StarCraft news of the week. All right, let's just read what it says. StarCraft. Uh, so, well. Yeah, StarCraft. Lol. All right, Heroes <laughs> Storm. Good, I can talk about something again. When 
when do you think so let's, let's start uh here's the storm this is a game we've all we're all really excited for right like we all played it at blizzcon well just hate it. We've, most of us have played at blizzcon we've been, me and squishy the one the show that i am going to keep able to do is is still the heroes uh storming the forge Storming the Did I even get that right? Storming the Nexus. My God, I can't. Even I thought he said storming the Mexicans. Wow. Yep. <laughs> There's enough of them around here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my God. <sighs> oh, this turn. The show just took a turn. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Are you? Let's. What was I even gonna say? Oh. <laughs> when do you? All right, let's talk about when you guys think the beta is gonna start. Zista. I I, I went into this already. Wild Wild star. Well, oh, okay. Uh, when, when did I say on our other podcast March? Did I say March first? February. I said February something, middle of February. I, I I'll stick with that. Uh, maybe March first, around there. I'm gonna say sooner ish TM. Sooner ish, yeah, TM. I've per- I gotta think about this. I've perplexed it. I gotta think about this. I don't Sophis, know. you're fading. You don't have time to think. I'm gonna go March 11th. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Arbitrary date, but okay. That seems weird, because that would be about the same time that, that the Diablo 3 game is coming out. That would be. Let's go March 9th. Okay. Early March. March well, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense, because... They don't want it to release at the same time as Diablo, nor directly after it. So it's a good time. All right, Wild star. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was um, just how the games look so far. I know we've talked a little bit in more depth about it on the other podcast, but uh, you guys have all got a chance to watch the dev the dev games and how it's progressed since. Uh, BlizzCon, how do you how do you think it looks so far? You, like as far as just polish, I guess right now, uh, like polish and uh, depth, I guess I'll say depth because that was one key area that people were worried about. Looks good. I mean, uh, as far as polish, I mean, we have made a goof that you know blue team needs a nerf. Blue team's always overpowered. I mean, have we seen red team win yet? No, uh, no. no exactly. <laughs> I mean, even that they're getting dominated in the beginning, and then all of a sudden, up, oh, oh, blue team wins. Um, is it the same players every time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same ten devs. Yeah, but they don't trade teams. Is my point? Nope. Don't no. think so. Okay. So yeah, but uh, it looks good so far. I mean, there are multiple map objectives, and like every map, you have a couple strategies for winning. I mean, you have the main objective, like on Blackheart, is you know the gigantic ship that shoots cannons at the enemy base or, you know, siege minions and the grave golem in the top and things like that. So you have a couple of, a couple of ways to execute a base push and, you know, go for the win there. I like it. It seems like it's coming out. Okay. And everything's working as intended so far. I mean, I think their idea, I I think, you know, it's a great idea. They just have to execute it properly. And so far it looks like it is being executed properly. Awesome. I just want the beta now. Just uh, mm-hmm. I guess the rest of the other the other group here has actually talked about this a little more in depth. But what do what do you think about kind of the polish and 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 do you think it's going to be a deep enough game? Like because that was that like I said that was the that was the the key issue coming out of BlizzCon. People were like, well, it's not going to be as it's not going to be as as deep as this league. It's not as complicated. And that was obviously right. that's what they compare it to. Right, but. it's going to be. But in the same way, we're comparing Hearthstone to Magic: The Gathering, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody said it's not as deep of a game. And yeah, they're right to a degree. But is there depth to Hearthstone? Of course there is. Is there like this ever-changing meta that you you have to like completely work around, like build decks around? Yeah, there is. So I believe there's going to be this, especially and what it's going to come down to with Hearthstone is how quickly, how often, and of what extent they're releasing champions. Because mm. that is going to change the meta of that game. And um, not just skins, I mean like actual new champions and stuff yeah. like that. So 
Um, it's going to come down to that. It's going to come down to different maps, depending this map, this character will be better for and, and whatnot. It depends on the frequency in which those are released as well. Um, but as for, is it a polished enough game? Of course it is. Uh, it was, it, the game was so fun. I like, I'm not a fan of League. I, I don't enjoy playing it. Um, part of it is maybe I just don't completely understand it. And I, I pr I'm going to tell you right now, I don't completely understand it. But um, this was a game that I was able to jump into. I played it. I felt like I knew what I was doing after the second playthrough. A little overwhelmed on the first because it's a new style game for me. So first game, I was still kind of learning things and figuring out and whatnot. But by the time I got into the second game, I knew what I was doing. I had an objective, I knew what I was supposed to, my role as a player, and the what we had to do to achieve the end goal, as, as well as the micro goals that you had leading up to the battle. I was very satisfied with it, and I think actually having many objectives uh, helps the, the game uh, feel faster than it actually is. So... Um, I don't know. I just had a, I had a lot of fun with that, and, and I can't wait to see it. Awesome. Squishy, One thing how do you I feel about it. Oh. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, Mike. Um, I was say I was watching the uh, I was watching the LCS today. I was watching the you know the Cloud Nine versus uh, Digitas or whoever game, and um, I was just made note of the time. I look, I go, oh, it's 18 minutes 30 seconds and seconds in. Okay. I haven't really seen a crazy big team fight. Yeah, a couple no. skirmishes. This game's been pretty slow. Some last hits, some poking, maybe kill. Yeah. If this was Heroes of the Storm, it'd be three minutes in, and there'd already have been two major friggin' team fights. Yeah. It's definitely so. improvement over their respect for spectators. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to see slow, Battle of the Atlantic LCS, um, it was literally like a 35 minute lull period of just farming. And uh, for the league players, uh, they had a Draven. He just stacked up his passive, got his first yeah. kill, banked almost 2,000 gold off his first kill. There that's how slow that game was. And yep. But that's the thing. I mean, le uh, heroes, they start you with all of your abilities except for your ultimate. You, know, you get your three abilities and a talent. And they throw you out there. Minions spawn pretty damn quickly. And it's like, all right, now go kill each other. You don't got to worry about, you know, gathering. Ex if one person's there for the kill, everybody gets the experience. You don't got to, you know, worry about roaming. If you're, t I mean, if you have all three lanes covered with one champion, if there is even three lanes, some laughs have two, then the other two people could just roam around freely and not have to worry about that crap. Well, the other thing with that is because because they are they do have all these like mini objectives that you have to do. Sometimes it's required that you have somebody stay at one of these mini objectives while another lane is being pushed by two or more people it's kind of unfair at that point to keep the other person at that objective if he's not going to be gaining experience because it's required that you have to do there's not really mobs around that you can farm there are definitely some in the the few that were there if you happen to go by them solo you got destroyed so mm -hmm. um that's it's a completely different game so it, it's necessary that they had this um zone wide whatever you want to call it uh experience gain and uh i think it's a change for the better Definitely. that's i think one of the more controversial changes in, in my it's opinion one of the more I, controversial but i think it's going to work out to be the best i could mm -hmm. see it being a good thing uh what i'm what it personally what i'm really excited for here is um what i think per, that is going to add more depth to this is the introduction of new maps right i mean i feel like uh, along with how quickly things will escalate in this game. So there's going to be action from the beginning. Also, the ability to, to do something, if they have enough maps, they can they can do it similar to, similarly to the way that StarCraft is done, right? You can have map bans. You can, you can then have series go from one map to a different map to a different map. And whoever has, you know, like if it comes to like, if, if there's an esports thing and there's playoffs or whatever, you can have people with, you know, quote unquote home field advantage. They can choose more maps than their, their, right. their other player. It, it adds this other layer of metagame depth. Like we have a great team. We're great on these maps. These other maps we're kind of shaky on because uh, of the, the way we like to play. So we want to stay away from those. And then you add this, this whole nother level of, of we want to force these guys into these maps if we can because we're decent here and they're not that good at those. Yeah. Uh, 
that mm-hmm. to me yeah. is really what I'm excited about because it's, it's just adds something else that, that wasn't in any other version of these type of games. And the fact that they said they can do it so easily and make them so balanced is impressive. And, and we've seen how balanced th- th- they are uh, with not one objective being like way too overpowered that you can't overcome it a different way. Uh, I do take a lot of stock in these death matches because these are people that have played it a lot. Yeah. Uh, so you get to see, hopefully, but maybe not the top level of competition, but you'll see people that are used to the game and they right. understand the game and they can play and they should not be able to like over, you know, overmatch the other people. Yeah. It will be the players that are the innovators, not the down zone. Oh yeah. 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 And, and that's one of the reasons I also hope that they allow people to edit maps because yeah. if yeah. they see a map, that's amazing. People are playing it a lot. They could take it maybe tweak a little bit of balance issues about it and then add it to whatever if there is an esports they've also said that like esports is not something they're pushing for if people want to make it into an esport then they'll be happy to do it and, and right. that we've seen that in how they want to implement spectator mode except etc et and so, i would love to I, see if they were able to do stuff like that if they have like the blizzcon tournament can you imagine blizzcon tournament map like it's exclusive for you know blizzcon that, that, that's what starcraft does you know yeah and, but then maybe even release it out to the public that you could do it, but only after so long, or maybe you can unlock it somehow, or I, I don't know. It seems they, like it'd be cool. There's, yeah. With the StarCraft editor, you can literally do anything. I mean, there are right. going to be, you can literally make people last hit. There are going to be maps where you can last hit, and it will give you bonuses. Mm-hmm. There's, mm-hmm. It's going to happen. There's going to be gold in some version of an edited map, so we'll see how that goes. Exactly. Yep. Um, so, Curious. I think that's it for this episode. You're you're fading out of existence, Sophist. <laughs> I'm no longer existing in this world. Quick, let's wrap up. Wait, we gotta uh, we gotta figure out how to bring Sophist back. What if we don't want him back? Wow. Oh, that's mean. I love I you, Sophist. <laughs> we'll never forget. <laughs> Never let go. Never <laughs> let go, Jack. Come back. He's he's Come really back. gone. Look at him. You can barely see him now. It's alright. It's nice over here. <laughs> what, what is it like on the other side? Don't don't go toward the light. I can't. The light is so bright. What does Zista look like in the other dimension? Uh, I don't know. Is, is, is I he think fat? That's where the souls no, exist, I look the same. So I, I look I the same. I, I I exist. I'm the anchor. I exist on both sides of the world. I'm, okay. I'm neither living nor dead. I'm in both <laughs> places at the same time. Oh, God. Um, well, uh, I guess this is where we, we wrap it, wrap it up, right? That's it. We don't got anything else to talk about. So This is your last episode. What, what do you want? Is there anything else you want to talk about? I don't, how, I don't think there is. How do we bring you back? We, we can't have know. you go out like this. I don't uh, know. Do you have a DeLorean? I have a DeLorean. Do I have what I wish? That'd be amazing. <laughs> no, he has a Jeep. Is this do, the, a Jeep. Do, do you have a hair video for him? Or do you have a hair video? I wish. <gasps> did you guys do my... Did you do a video for me? I wish. <laughs> if, I, if I had some more notice, maybe. <laughs> um, Need to sing part say... of your world to him? Is that what Kiggles needs to do? <laughs> I, I, I will say... That I'm not, I'm not definitely not gone. Gone. I'll be around, like I said, available for things. I'll, I'll be on the other, the other podcast. Uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff going on. School mostly. School, school, school. I might be trying to, you know, do some stuff. With... You're streaming Octodad. That is a must. <laughs> All right, I'll stream Octodad. There, you Mike. said it. <laughs> I will. Mike. I will stream Octodad. Uh, what maybe, else? maybe, I... maybe. Sophus works like um in. In Once Upon a Time. Well, if you clap your hands and you believe, can you bring Sophus back? <laughs> hey, that's on you guys. I can't clap to bring myself back. That's, that's Maybe. Conceited. You don't want you don't to try it? Maybe if, like, Squishy and Phil hug each other. <laughs> no. Not with the... Not no. <laughs> <laughs> What? Oh, oh, what is he doing? It's somewhere. It's somewhere. He's what? going in with the tongue. I'm going in with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> ah!
Jesus. <laughs> okay, so what am I doing now? I don't know. I, I don't know. You've lost. Where, it. Where's the plot twist by M. Night Shyamalan? <laughs> the Sophist oh, no, was actually it's... dead the whole time. I was, yeah. <laughs> he, yep. he was never here on the podcast. Like Bruce Willis. And now that you know that, it, it, you might you might actually be able to see him. Just just hold my hand. Just hold my hand. I won't let go. <laughs> I was sitting there like, wait, is he fading back? He's fading. No, he's not fading back. Maybe he isn't. <laughs> yes, he is, actually. Well, see, now that you knew the plot twist and he was really dead the whole time, then you know that he's really not there, so your mind is like accepting the fact that he's not there and you're, you're seeing what you want to see. Oh. Hopefully, hopefully, I'll also be able to start uh, developing a, a some sort of silly, cheap indie game here soon, too. Oh, I love that. I have one. Now that... Maybe we can play it in post-show. I have a couple that I've made. Yeah. Uh, so. Since we were like, oh, let's see Bruce Willis. He was dead the whole time. Hammer in, in chat goes, thanks for ruining Die Hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's not Die Hard. I, right. It was... Bruce Willis would have died four times in that movie. Episode Just eight. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's it. I, that's it for the show. We've Just been so we have the. Uh, oh, so. There we. There we go. All right. You guys get Look to see all our, our totally professional little, job here. Lower yeah. thirds. Look at these. Look I at love that. your lower third. They're amazing. This is so. Phil, cool. you're low. No, you're lower no, you, need to, you need to. You need to stretch a little. Yeah. You, <laughs> uh, is that better? Oh, oh my! Someone screen cap that. <laughs> I'll just freeze permanently like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Better. my God. Oh, all right. So. These are amazing. Zista, why don't you tell the people of the interwebs uh, where they can find you at? You can find me down there at Zista, X I Z T A with an underscore. Uh, you could also find me on the SC9 TV podcast, Facebook.com, Twitter.com, and Google Plus, Gmail, all that. ASO TV podcast. That is a lot of things. It is. That is a lot of things. That is awesome. All right, Squishy. What about you? How about you tell the fine people of the internet where they can find you at? Find me at Squishy down below. I run the Storming the Nexus podcast, where Sophist is still going to be hanging out when he's not dead. That's nice. Um... We, we do it Mondays at 8 Eastern time. And I uh, guess you should come check us out if you're interested in Heroes of the Storm. That includes tomorrow. You do it. Phil, you, sir. You and your fancy, fancy lower thirds. My fancy uh, lower third. Uh, where where can people find you? Aside from here now. You and uh, you uh, and It would be uh, the two manning the, the empty spot here. And uh, making, making me proud. Sophus gets, you know, replaced by the Phillykins. <laughs> uh, yeah, they could find me, as you can see, by the hand drawn in paint by Zista at Philodrin on Twitter. Well, my handwriting's not that bad. That's totally no, you. Bad. It's fine. It's fine. They could find me there. They can find me also on that Storming the Nexus podcast with Squishy and Sophus. They could also find me writing for the website that Squishy and I run, uh, stormforgedheroes.com. It's a Heroes of the Storm website, everything. There's hero guides, uh, discussions about the game, and all that sorts of stuff. I write the guides. I'm not the greatest at it, but you know what? I'm going off of what little limited information is available. Yes, they will be getting better. And as far as me, mm. you can still find me at The Real Sophist. I'm going to try and stay as active as possible. Uh, on there, you will also be able to find me as as they've mentioned before. The Heroes of the Storm podcast that we do uh, that is affiliated with StormforgeHeroes.com. And um, keep an eye out. I'm going to try and stream when I can. Uh, it's going to be hit or miss. I will be doing Octodad. Octodad. <laughs> better be doing Octodad. And uh, keep an eye out. I, I'm going to. That's my one of my goals for this next year is to really push out my my own indie game of some sort so that look forward i will as soon as it's it's anywhere near it, oh when it's an alpha i will let you guys know <laughs> i think we'll That's... we'll all be uh looking to play that We're waiting i the oh, softest yeah. studio oh mm -hmm. man soft studios yeah, you're soft gonna make you're gonna make uh, something with like octodad like controls right i those the best 
Squid Dead. Squid Mom. If you guys want to play Norwegian later, we can do that. All the art for that, by the way, was done by Torstein in chat, just so you know. The art. I, I am looking. We <laughs> Something I will need is an artist, for the love of God. I will need an artist at can, some point. Can I be your story here. writer? Um, maybe, actually. I don't know what I want to do yet. Uh, exactly. I've got some ideas. Maybe well, we can get the other. See, what I would really be good, maybe not the lead story writer or anything like that, but I'm really good at linking things together that seem like they have no reason to be connected. I'm awesome at that. Perfect. I will, I will, I'll hire you for free 99. Free 99 sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Can I also be the lead Pepsi drinker? Ah, uh, you're gonna have to fight Luke for that. He's senior annoyed Pepsi drinker, I think. Okay. Can I be? So can I be can... second lead Pepsi drinker? Uh, oh, better yet, can I be the lead yes. monster drinker? No, you could be a uh, Pepsi drinker assistant. Luke is also uh, the guy who's been teaching me this stuff. I don't. I don't know if you guys know this. Oh yeah. It, it, Probably you know, more so than college at this point. I've learned more from Luke than college. Let, let me be the lead monster energy drinker. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, that works. We will do that. I will I will have full... Maybe we'll kickstart or something. Ooh. I don't think people want to pay for something I've done. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Um, one last time for Squishy, for Phil for weekends, which you will see at some point soon on this here podcast for Zista. I'm Sophus. Thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. I'll and see it fades time. again. Bye. And now a tribute song for Sophus. <laughs> It's so beautiful. <laughs> Goodbye, Sophie. We'll miss you.